there had been some misconceptions about the kind of the tone of the film and the you know, whether it was a comedy or and, and you feel better after <laughs> from, the, from the audience reaction there. Yeah, I definitely felt felt a lot better after Austin, but you have to remember it's the first time that any real audience had seen the film, and the only people that had seen the movie before then were friends and family, uh, for obvious reasons that nobody had some was interested in having just anybody see the film, and uh, they didn't want a chance. So they uh, they they waited, and uh, so it was a little nerve wracking. But um, I think also, you know, people because there hasn't been a lot of materials out there, and they didn't they weren't able to build the materials that they normally would. People assumed that a movie about a guy with a puppet was going to be a comedy, a fraught comedy. And uh, I do feel like I have to introduce the film if I can, and you know, let people know that it's drama right away, so they don't go running out of the theater screaming. <laughs> I did try to paraphrase the way you introduced it in Austin to the audience. Beforehand, so um, hopefully no one got freaked out by the guy. <laughs> um, did um, just to, let's let's start with a couple of obvious sure. questions. I guess this this uh, script has been on what they call the blacklist. Can you explain that a little and explain why you plucked it from shore obscurity? Uh, well, the blacklist is are the one hundred best unproduced screenplays that year in Hollywood, and those films are usually incredibly quirky and very difficult to get off the ground, uh, so there's a reason that they're unproduced, and uh, most of them are not, uh, they're spec scripts, they're, they're not scripts that are developed by a studio. Um, so this was a, you know, it was an interesting piece of material, but I think people were rightfully concerned about how somebody would handle it. Uh, at the time, uh, when I read it, uh, they managed to get Jay Roach, uh, I have a, a big comedy director that we all know, and Steve Carell uh, were, were attached. Neither of them had really done any work in script or anything and try, or had meetings about it, but they were trying to figure out where it would fit and then decided it was too difficult to do and they jumped off and did um, my dinner with Sharks after that. <laughs> <laughs> of writers out there just waiting to write funny headlines. I, I love people's faces when they say the title of the movie. And, they just, and I just enjoy every minute of it. All my friends are saying, you're going to change the title, right? I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, no, I, it's irreverent. And, uh, and uh, I, I feel like in some ways you have to have an irreverent uh, attitude to enjoy the film. Uh, because it, it does have a quirky tone. It has a strange tone to it. Uh, it does live in both the light and the dark, and uh, it requires the audience to, to, to think and feel in a complicated way. And um, you know, those are not general public movies. These are movies that are specialized, and they're, they're, there's a lot of care that's taken into how you release these films because you know that they don't appeal to everybody. Um, and so, so you made your movie, yes. and uh, then life took over. Yes. Um, the world, the things that were completely out of your control took over and have delayed the release of the film. How frustrating was that, and how did you sort of deal with it? And, and it's, can you still talk a little bit about your relationship with your leading actor? Yeah, well, it, yeah, it's frustrating. I suppose that uh, you know, the film was uh, slated for release three times in full. Um, but you know, the truth is, is, it's so rare for a director to be able to actually make a movie uh, that I feel you know not only grateful to have made the movie that I loved and the movie that I wanted to make. Script, you know, you really should have read the script. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I just I feel grateful. I feel grateful for Mel's performance, and uh, I would not change that for one minute. I think he was always the right actor for the role, precisely because he's somebody who can live with the wit and the lightness and can bring that to the part, but who understands 